Hi students, IBM is here with the last episode of uh, AS Physical Quantities, Units and Measurement Techniques. These are multiple choice questions. Uh, these are for paper one. Today I'm recording the last episode of uh, multiple choice questions under AS Physical Quantities. And therefore, I hope that you learn a lot from this last video. You must be doing a lot of practice, and by now, those who are doing exams, you must be uh, benefiting from these uh, episodes, from these series of sort of the first paper questions, and you, you'll appreciate when the results are released. So uh, I think in part, uh, in part five, we stopped on page 56, and in the last part, which is part seven, part six, I want us to start from page 57. Okay. So, a cylindrical tube rolling down a slope of inclination theta moves the distance L. So, L is distance in meters. In a time t, t is in, uh, in seconds. The equation relating these quantities is L into 3 plus A squared over P is equal to Q T squared. So, remember for homogeneity, the, equation, the, the units on both sides of the equation must be the same. Also, we can only add or subtract the quantities with the same units. So uh, we have already done this equation. So if I manipulate this again, I'll have 3 times LP plus um, S squared on, uh, on, on the left-hand side times L. I, I brought L into the brackets. I multiplied by P. Then I take P the other side. So it becomes P times Q times T squared sine theta. So we only add quantities with the same units. That means the units of 3LP are the same as the units of A squared times L. So let's start with A squared because A was distance, moves at, sorry, moves a distance. L was a distance and T was time. A was the internal radius of the tube. So a has units as meters. So the units of A squared, L, are going to be meters squared times meters, which is giving us meters cubed. So it means the units of 3LP should also be uh, meters cubed because we only add the quantities of the same units. So since L is in units meters, then the units of P would be meters cubed divided by meters, which gives us meters squared. Because L is in meters, so the units of P, of course, 3 has no unit. You can't put, uh, think of a unit for 3, it is just a constant. So it means the units of P are meters cubed, so we eliminate D. Then the units of Q, remember we said homogeneity, the units on both sides of the equation must be equal. The units on the left hand side, left hand side, left hand side has units as meters cubed. Because it is meters cubed plus meters cubed, uh, a quantity in meters cubed and another quantity in meters cubed. So on the left hand side, the units are meters cubed. So the right hand side should also have uh, the same units. So the units on the right hand side will be those of P, which is meters squared, times those of Q, which we don't know, times T squared, which is seconds squared. This should be equal to M cubed. Because, of course, sine theta is a ratio, so it has no units. So it means uh, Q is therefore going to be equal to M squared. It cancels with that one. You remain with M. So it becomes M over S squared, which is going to be equal to um, M per second squared. So the units of Q are those of acceleration. So the most appropriate answer is going to be B. Which quantity can be measured in electron volts? Of course, that is energy. We have already seen that energy can be measured in electron volts. What is the ratio 10 power negative 3 tera? 10 power negative 3 tera is times 10 power 12 divided by 10 power 3 kilohertz. So 10 power 3 times 10 power 3 because kilo is 10 power 3. So what is that ratio? Oh, where is my calculator? Okay, so we can check this using the calculator. So we have um, one exponent in negative three, that is 10 power negative three, times one exponent 12, that is 10 power negative power 12, divided by 
Of course, 10 power 3 times 10 power 3, that is 10 power 6. So which gives us 1,000. So this is equal to 1,000. And 1,000 is the same as 10 power 3, so the answer is going to be D. The following physical quantities can be either positive or negative. S, displacement. Theta, temperature. Q, uh, electric charge. V, readings on the digital voltmeter. Which quantities are vectors? So displacement is a vector, and I think uh, the rest are scalars. So the answer here is going to be D. Temperature is a scalar, electric charge is a scalar, reading on a voltmeter is a scalar. So the answer there is simply displacement. The speedometer in a car consists of a pointer which rotates. The pointer is treated several millimeters from a calibrated scale. What could cause a random error? Remember a random error could be as a result of, or an example could be parallax error, which could be as a result of taking readings from different angles. This could cause scattering of readings around a true value. So what could cause a random error in the driver's measurement of the car speed? Number one, the car speed is affected by the wind direction that cannot cause a random error. The direction is, the, the driver's eye is not always in the same position in relation to the point. This could cause taking readings from different angles, which is a random error. The speedometer does not read zero when the car is at rest. So this is a systematic error, a zero error. The speedometer reads 10% higher than the car's actual speed. This is also a systematic error. So the random error would be not taking readings from the same position or from the same angle. Uh, that is what we are calling um, parallax error. The SI unit for potential difference, the volt is given in base units by, so the volt is a unit of uh, PD, and PD can be energy per unit charge. We know the units of energy. Energy is uh, kilogram meters squared per second squared, divided by charge. Charge is I times T, where I is amperes and T is in seconds. So when we simplify this, we get kilograms meters squared per second cubed per ampere, which makes our answer to be D. The product of pressure and volume has the same SI base units as, of course, pressure and volume. Pressure times volume. Pressure is force over area, then times volume. So it means uh, the product cannot have the same, uh, the same as force. So volume, volume is uh, length, length, uh, volume is cross-sectional area times length, volume is cross-sectional area times length, so the area cause, cancels out because uh, they have the same unit, so you remain with the force, which is, you remain with the force times length, this is going to be newtons times meters, that is going to be I think this is energy, which is the same as work done. This can also be work done, force times distance. So here our answer is precisely going to be energy. Because energy can be called work done, and work done can be force times distance. So here we are seeing force over area, that is pressure, times volume, which is cross-sectional area times length. Cross-sectional area can cancel, or the units can cancel. It went with force times L. F times L is newtons and meters. And energy can be equal to work done because work done is energy in motion. So that is force times distance, whose units will also be newton meters. So the answer there is energy. An ion is accelerated by a series of electrodes in a vacuum. A graph of power of the power supply to the ion is plotted against time. What is represented by the area under the graph between two times? the area under the graph between two times. An ion is accessed by a series of electrodes. Of course, this is electric fields, which is out of the syllabus, but still a graph of the power supplied is plotted against time. So we have a graph of power against time. What is represented by the area under the graph? So if let us assume, uh, even if the power is constant, even if the power is constant, or let's consider the power changing then. Let's say the power is changing or it is increasing. So what is represented by the area 
under the graph between two times between two values of t let this be t1 and and t2 this area here so um that area would be if we consider if we consider t1 to be 0 that is a half of a half of power divided by the difference between t2 minus t1 and i think that is going to be simply a kinetic energy it is going to be energy a half times power a half times power times t and we know that energy is equal to power times because power is energy over time energy is equal to power times time so this is a half times the energy or a half times work done which is most likely going to be uh, the change in the kinetic energy of the ion so this is going to be um, the change in kinetic energy of the ion it cannot be the force there is no relationship between area and the force here it can't be momentum it can't be a change in velocity but it must be related to change in energy a signal has frequency 2 megahertz what is the period of the signal so period is equal to 1 over frequency which frequency is 2 times 10 power 6 so 1 divided by 2 exponent 6 because it is mega that is 5 times 10 power negative 7 5 times 10 power negative 7 5 times 10 power negative 7 so the question is what is the period what is the period let's check of course this one is automatically wrong this one is also wrong it should be 5 something then let's check a micro when i change this to micro i divide by 10 power negative 6 divide by 10 power negative 6 to change it to micro to become 0 0.5 so this one is wrong 5 microseconds is wrong then let's check nano uh, we have 5 exponent negative 7 divided by we are changing to nano so i divide by 1 exponent negative 9 because nano is exponent negative 9 this is giving me 500 nanoseconds so this one is correct so our answer is going to be d a metal sphere of radius r is dropped into a tank of water as it sinks at speed v, it experiences a drag force F given by the by F is equal to KRV, where K is a constant. What are the SI base units of K? SI base units of K. So I will make K the subject. K is equal to force divided by R times V. So I'll just substitute in the units. Force is kilogram meters per second squared. Divided by R is the radius, which is meters v is speed which is meters per second so 1m has already cancelled so you remain with the kilogram one the m goes up it becomes per meter when s here we subtract the powers negative 2 minus negative 1 to becomes negative 1 so that is s power negative 1 which makes our answer to be c which physical quantity would result from a calculation in which a potential difference is multiplied by an electric charge? PD is multiplied by an electric charge. PD times charge. I think that is going to be energy because we know that PD is equal to energy divided by charge. That is energy converted from one form to another per unit charge. So this is going to be electrical energy. Which row shows a base quantity with its correct SI unit? Base quantity. These are base quantities. This one is not. Uh, current is in amperes. Mass is not in grams. Mass is supposed to be kilograms. Temperature is supposed to be Kelvin. So the correct answer is A. The friction of force F on a sphere falling through a fluid is given by the formula F is equal to 6 pi A nu times V. A is radius, so that is in meters. Nu is a constant relating to the fluid. V is velocity, that is in meters per second. Remember, F was friction of force, which is kilogram meters per second squared. What are the units of nu? So I will make nu the subject here. Nu is going to be F divided by 6 pi times A times nu. Sorry, nu is the subject. 
6 pi times a times v. So I'll just substitute the units for f, it is kilogram meters per second squared. Of course, 6 pi will be ignored in the units. A is radius, which is in meters. V is velocity, which is in meters per second. So meters has cancelled. So this is giving us kilogram. Again, M goes up, it becomes per meter. S power negative 2 divided by S power negative 1. We have S power negative 1. So answer is going to be B. What is the component of this displacement vector in the xy direction? That is in the horizontal. We resolve this horizontally. So this is going to be 5 cos of 53 or 5 sine. Because if I may use this angle here, which is 20, 27, no, not 27, 37. If I use 27, I can say 5 sine 37. I think that gives us the same answer, 5 cos 3 or 5 sine 37. So the answer is going to be A, 3.0. A meter rule is used to measure the length of a piece of wire. It is found to be 70 centimeters long to the nearest millimeter, to the nearest millimeter. How should this result be recorded in a table of results? It is 70 centimeters. From a meter ruler, this is 70.0 centimeters. That is the nearest uh, millimeter. The nearest millimeter is 0 0.1 centimeters. Now, we, the values here are given in meters. So I will say 70.0 divided by 100 to change them to meters. So you will notice these are one, two, three significant figures. So I will maintain. Um, I will maintain the same number of significant figures. So 70 divided by 100, that is 0 0.7. So this is 0 0.7, but I, I had one, two, three significant figures. So I'll have to add three zeros in meters. So the answer is going to be, I'll have to add two zeros in meters because I have to maintain the same number of significant figures. The zeros which come after a non-zero digit in a decimal number are significant. So this is going to be the most appropriate value. That is how the student will record it in the table. Which of the following is a scalar quantity? Of course, this one is automatically mass. The rest are vectors. The unit work, the unit of work, the joule, may be uh, defined as the work done when the point of application of a force of one newton is moved a distance of one meter in the direction of the force. Express the joule in terms of base units. I think that is very easy. Joule is automatically going to be B. Because if joule is a unit of work done, which is force, force is kilogram, meters per second squared times distance, which is meters, that gives us B. Which, give, which of the following pairs of units are SI base units? SI. Degrees Celsius is not SI. Ampere and Kelvin, the answer is going to be B because both of them are SI base units. Remember, degree Celsius is not Kelvin. The SI base units of temperature is the Kelvin. The column is not uh, SI base units. The SI base units of charge are ampere seconds because charge is IT. The diagram shows two vectors, X and Y. In which vector triangle does the vector z show the magnitude and direction of vector x minus y? So I can try to fix x, then uh, instead of drawing y to the right, I'll draw y to the left. So if you have a ruler, you can draw this to, you can try to measure so that you have a more, you can have an easier way of arriving at the answer. So I'm going to transfer y onto x, but I'll reverse the direction because the vectors are joined head to tail. So I will have to reverse the direction. This is going to be negative y. So x plus negative y. They are forming uh, an anticlockwise loop, so the resultant must be the other round. 
So if they form an anticlockwise loop, then the resultant must be clockwise. So the resultant will be somewhere here. So if I may, you measure very carefully, you notice that the resultant is most likely going to be there. So this is going to be the Z, the, the direction of the Z. So A is out because it's showing vectors are not X and Y are not even joined head to tail. Then um, I think the answer is automatically going to be B. But alternatively, you could also find a Z plus Y to be equal to X. Z, Z plus Y. These ones are forming a clockwise loop and they give us X in the other way around. So it means the answer is going to be B. I'll not check the others. Which formula could be correct for the speed? For the speed V of ocean waves in terms of density of seawater and acceleration of free fall G, the depth H of the ocean and the wavelength lambda. So we have just to check which of these equations has units as meters per second because those should be the units of speed. We are looking for which equation when simplified the units are meters per second. Let's begin with the first one. The first one is going to be the units are going to be the square root of g is in meters per second squared, that is acceleration, times wavelength is in meters. So meters squared and meters per second squared, when you find the square root, you remain with meters per second, which is the unit of speed. So this is going to be correct. We can check the rest. You can check, I will just check C. C, density is kilogram per meter, I mean kilogram per meter squared, per meters cubed, then G is meters per second, H is meters. When I, this is under the square root. When I simplify, I have square root of kilogram, meters power negative three times meters times meters becomes meters power negative one, S power negative one. This, there's no way this will give us the unit of speed. So the answer is, is A, you can check the rest. Which pair contains one vector and one scalar? These are both vectors. The force is a vector, kinetic energy is a scalar, so the answer is B. Velocity and momentum are both vectors. Power and speed are both scalars. Which of the following could be measured in the same units as force? As force. Remember, force, force can be the rate of change of momentum. Force can be changed in momentum over time. So um, let's check. And the units of force could be newtons, or it could be kilogram meters per second squared. Kilogram meters per second squared. So let's check. Energy over energy over density. Energy, uh, sorry, energy divided by distance. Let's check energy divided by distance. Energy divided by distance. The units for energy are kilogram meters squared per second squared. Divide by distance, which is meters. So 1m cancels with that. This gives us kilogram meters per second squared. So automatically the answer is A without checking even the rest. You can check energy times distance, energy over time, and momentum times distance, but the answer is A. The, the notation microseconds is used as abbreviation for a certain unit of time. What is the name and the value of this unit? So this is read as micro, it is not milli. Milli will be M, S, milliseconds. So it is micro, and micro stands for 10 power negative 6. So the answer is automatically A. What is the reading shown on this millimeter, millimeter scale, millimeter? Okay, let's check. So we first know the scale of this, one, two, three, four, five. There are five divisions, so I'll say two divided by five to get the representation of each division. And two divided by five, I think it is 0 0.4. So here we have one, two, three. So that is three times 0 0.4, I think that gives us 1.2. Then it is in the center, so it is plus, plus a half of 0 
So this gives us 1.2 plus a half of 0 0.4 which is 0 0.2. So that is giving us 1.4. Now we shall add this to 2. So our value is 2 plus 1.4 which gives us 3.4. So our answer is automatically C. Milliampers. So that reading is is is, is 3.4 milliampers. That is a very basic equation. Which for which quantity is the magnitude a reasonable estimate? I think we have answered such a question earlier on. Uh, 500 uh, picohertz radio waves have high frequency. This one is wrong because they have a smaller wavelength. They have a high frequency. Remember, pico is 10 power negative 12, so that is wrong. 500 mi mi micrograms, that is 500 times 10 power negative 6 times 10 power negative 3 to change it to kilograms. The mass of an atom should be of an order close to the negative 27 kilograms. 10 power negative 27 kilograms. So it means this is this is very big for the mass of an atom. The young modulus is 500 kilopascals, 500 times 10 power 3 pascals. This gives us 5 times 10 power 5 pascals. Young modulus of metals is of the order uh, 10 power 11 or gigahertz, gigapascals. Wavelength of green light, 500 nanometers. So this one is a realistic uh, estimate. We know that the red, uh, visible light ranges from red at 700 nanometers up to violet at 400 Nanometers, so green green light could be in between there. So this is a reasonable estimate. Which is a pair of SI base units? A joule is not SI. A coulomb is not SI. Um, a newton is not SI. So the answer is C. Kilogram is SI for mass. Kelvin is SI for temperature. What is the ratio? One uh, one micrometer over one gigameter. So this is micro is 10 power negative 6 in meters. Giga is 10 power 9 in meters. So we just divide. 1 exponent negative 6 divided by 1 exponent 9. So that is 10 power 15. So our answer is going to be, our answer is going to be what? It's going to be D. That is 10 power negative 15. The resistance of an electric component is measured. The following meter readings are obtained. What is the resistance? So the, uh, those are the, met the meter readings. This is 1,200 millivolts. So resistance is going to be V over I by Ohm's law. So 1,200 times 10 power negative 3 volts. Divide by, so this is the ammeter giving values of current in amperes. So this is 0. Point. The scale here is uh, 0 0.01. So 0 0.4142434. Is it? No, 0. Point. The scale here is 0. 0.02. Because we divide 0. 0.2 by 10. 10 divisions. There are 10 divisions here. So that is 0. 0.02. So this is going to be 0. 0.42. 4648. So this is 0 0.48 amperes. So I have 1200 exponent negative 3 divided by 0 0.48. So that is giving me 2.5. So the answer here is going to be 2.5 ohms. Five energies are listed starting with the smallest, smallest first. What is the order of increasing magnitude of these energies? Smallest first. So with expertise, I think the answer is going to be um, C. The smallest should be nano. Nano is smaller than kilo. It is smaller than mega. It is smaller than milli. So nano cannot come at the end. Nano cannot come after any of those. So this is wrong. As long as nano comes after any of those, then that is wrong. So you have to, you have to choose between B and C. Then a kilo, kilo and mega. Then this is milli. Milli is smaller than a kilo, so milli should come first. So the answer is going to be C. Remember, nano is ten power negative nine. A milli 
is 10 power negative 3. Then we have a uh, kilo, it is 10 power 3. Then we have mega, it is 10 power 6. So it means uh, the one with the mega should come at the end. Nano should come first because we want to start with the smallest. Which of the following correctly expresses the volt in terms of SI basins? I think this one we have already done it several times and the answer is going to be D. If you want me to remind you, I can still remind you, volt PD is equal to energy per unit charge, which is energy divided by current times time. The units of energy are kilogram meters squared per second squared. Remember, we can get it from force times distance, which is work done. Then divide by I, which is amperes, and T, which is seconds. So when you divide, you get kilogram. Meters squared remains there. S power negative 2 divided by S. We subtract the powers, which becomes S power negative 3. Then we have 1 over A, which becomes per ampere. So that is D. What is a reasonable estimate? What is a reasonable estimate of the average kinetic energy of an athlete during a 100 meter race? That takes 10 seconds. Of course, we proved this yes, last time, and this is going to be, I think, C. How? For 10 seconds in 100 meters, it means the speed is equal to distance over time, which is 10 meters per second. Then energy, kinetic energy is going to be a half m v squared. So we look, we check to see which mass does each of these give. So the mass is going to be 2 times 4,000 divided by v squared, which is 10 squared. And this gives us 80 kilograms, and that makes sense. When you, take, you check with the 40,000, you may get 800 kilograms. When you check with the 400, you may get 8 kilograms. And when you check with the 40, you may get 0 0.8 kilograms. That means the most appropriate value would be C. That gives a reasonable mass for the athlete. Which statement involving uh, multiples and sub-multiples of the base unit meter is correct? One pico is 10 power negative 9. That is wrong. Pico is negative 2. Nano, 10 power negative 6. Nano is 10 power negative 9. Milli, milli is 1 millimeter is 10 power 6 micrometers. Remember, micro is 10 power negative 6. So you have 10 power 6 times 10 power negative 6. That gives us... Um, that gives us one meter. That one. That means one millimeter is equal to one meter, which is wrong. So the answer is going to be D. One kilometer. A uh, one kilometer in meters is going to be one times ten power three in meters. Then ten power six millimeters is going to be ten power six times ten power negative three in meters, which gives us ten power three in meters. So it means these are equal. The answer is D. The diagram shows the resultant force and its horizontal and vertical components. The horizontal component is 20 newtons and theta is 30. This is 30 degrees. What is the vertical component? So this one is 20. And we want to find the vertical component. So uh, the vertical is in the opposite. You can simply say... Uh, cos, this is adjacent, and this is opposite. I think that is tan, opposite of adjacent. So the tan of 30 is equal to the opposite, which is uh, the vertical component of the force, over the adjacent, which is given as 20. So the vertical component is going to be 20 tan of 30. So 20 tan 30 gives us 11.5, which makes our answer to be C. So this is 11.5. Alternatively, alternatively, they have uh, if you, you could use a different approach, you could use a different approach. You can find uh, what the resultant is. So you could simply say R cos of 30 is equal to 20, and you get R. And then you take R to the vertical, which will be sine. R sine of 30 should give us the force in the vertical. 
So you can notice that when I divide the two equations, I still get tan of 30 is equal to Fy over 20. I divided the R sine 30 by R cos 30, I get tan. When I divide this, these two equations, I get tan 30 is equal to Fy over 20, which gives us Fy as 11.5 newtons. So the answer is C. The diagram shows, the diagrams show digital voltage. We have just done this equation, or we have done a similar equation like this one. So what is the electrical power of the heater? So this time we want power, this time we want the resistance. So power can be equal to I squared R, or power will be equal to V squared over R, or power will be simply I times V. So let's use I times V. I is going to be, we have already seen this as 0 0.48. So this will be 0 0.48 times. V is 1200 millivolts. So it is times 10 power negative 3. So 0 0.48 times 1200 exponent negative 3. That is 0 0.4. 576 which is 0 0.58 so the answer is going to be b 0 0.58 the prefix the prefix the prefix sent indicates 10 power negative 2 that is 1 centimeter is equal to 1 times 10 power negative 2 meters. Which line in the table correctly indicates the prefix micro? Of course, micro is 10 power negative 6. Micro is 10 power negative 6. Nano is 10 power negative 9. Pico is 10 power negative 12. So this is the correct line. So that is the correct answer. A student measures a current of 0 0.5 amperes. Which of the following correctly expresses this unit? 0 0.5 amperes, 50 milliamperes, that is 50 times 10 power negative 3. I think this is 50 exponent negative 3, that is 0 0.05, so this is wrong. 50 mega, 50 mega, that would be 50 times 10 power 6, that will automatically be wrong. 500 milliamperes. That would be 500 times 10 power negative 3 in amperes. 500 exponent negative 3. I think that is correct. So the answer is going to be C. A force of 5 newtons may be represented by two perpendicular components, OY and OX, as shown in the diagram, which is not drawn to scale. OY is... 3 newtons, so R OY is 3 newtons. I can just put here 3 newtons because it's also in the vertical. What is the magnitude of OX? So we want OX. That is very simple, Pythagoras theorem. So OX squared plus 3 squared should be equal to 5 squared. So that means OX is going to be the square root of the square root of 25 minus 9 which is 16, that means OX is going to be 4 newtons. So our answer is going to be C. The, moment, the, mom, the momentum of an object of mass M is P, which quantity has the same base units as P squared of M. I think this is kinetic energy. P squared, that is momentum squared. Momentum is newton seconds, but is squared. Divide by mass, which is kilograms. So um, this gives us newtons, newtons squared. Oh, let me just use SI units here. Let me just use SI units, SI base units here. So momentum is kilogram, that is mass times velocity, which is meters per second but this should be squared, divide by the mass, which is kilograms. So when we simplify this, when we simplify this, 
our kilogram is going to be squared m is also squared s is also power negative 2 divided by kilogram so one kilogram cancels with that you remain with kilogram meter squared per second squared which is energy you also remember the equa equation kinetic energy is equal to p squared over 2m this equation here so the two has no unit so it is the, uh, that is automatically leading us, leading us to kinetic energy if we multiply that by two in the denominator a micrometer screw gauge is used to measure the diameter of a copper wire the reading with the wire in position is shown in diagram one let's see that reading in diagram one we have uh, this is one two point five 5 on the main scale plus 0. Point. Here we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that is 9. 9 over 9 over, over 100 to become 0. 0.09. So this is 0. 0.09. So we sum up this. The main scale is giving us 2.59. That is when the, uh, the y is in position. When the wire is not in position, the reading is shown in the wire is removed and the jaws of the micrometer the micrometer are closed. The new reading is shown. So when there is no object, the reading is here. This is 14 because this is the horizontal line. This is 14. So this is reading 0 0.14 in millimeters because the micrometer screw gauge normally measures in millimeters. So this is going to be a zero error, which is positive. It is positive because um, the zero on the, the scale which rotates is on the left, is actually below. So that error is going to be positive. And if it is positive, we are just going to subtract it from uh, the main reading. So we have 2.59 minus 0 0.14, which gives us 2.45, which makes our answer to be B. Which line of the table gives values that are equal to a time of one picosecond and a distance of one giga, gigameter? So pico is 10 power negative 12. So this is wrong. This is wrong. Giga is power 9. So this is wrong. So our answer is automatically C. Which of the following definition is correct and uses only quantities rather than units? No units. Per cubic meter, there is a unit. Per unit current, potential difference is energy per unit current. Not at all. Potential difference is energy per unit charge. So this is wrong. Pressure is force per unit area. I think this is correct. It uses quantities and no units. Speed is distance traveled per second. Per second is a unit, so this is out. When a beam of light is incident on a surface, it delivers energy to the surface. The intensity of the beam is defined as the energy delivered per unit area per unit time. Intensity is energy per unit area per unit time. What is the unit of intensity expressed in SI base units? So we know the units of energy are kilogram, meters squared per second squared. Area is meters squared and time is seconds. So this one cancels. You remain with s power negative 2 divided by s to becomes s power negative 3. We subtract the power. So this is kilogram per second cubed. So the answer is going to be D. Which pair of units are both SI base units? SI. Degree Celsius is not SI. Ampere and Kelvin, these are SI. Coulomb is not SI. Degree Celsius is not SI. Coulomb is not SI. So the answer is going to be B. The prefix cent indicates 10 power negative 2. Which line in the table correctly indicates the prefix micro? Remember, micro is 10 power negative 6. Nano is 10 power negative 9. Pico is 10 power negative 12. So... It means this, these two are wrong because they are saying nano for 10 power negative 12. So A and B are out. Then um, micro is 10 power negative 6. So this one is wrong. So pico 10 power negative 12. Nano 10 power negative 9. Micro 10 power negative 6. So the answer is C. Which expression involving base units is equivalent to the volt? So we know that PD, which is the volt, is energy 
per unit charge, which is energy over I times T. And energy has units kilogram, meter squared per second squared, divided by I is ampere and T is seconds, which makes our answer to be D, kilogram, meters squared s power negative 2 divided by s to becomes s power negative 3 when a goes up to becomes per amp so the answer is going to be d which product pair of metric prefixes has the greatest magnitude greatest magnitude so we want the product pair and i think the answer is going to be d why we can check we can check all of them pico 10 power negative 12 times 10 power mega is 10 power 6 then nano is 10 power negative 9 times 10 power 3 micro is 10 power negative 6 times 10 power 9 mil is 10 power negative 3 times 10 power 12 tera so this one gives us just add the powers this becomes 10 power negative 6 this one becomes 10 power negative 6 this one becomes 10 power i'm adding the powers remember power 3 and this one becomes 10 power 9 so the answer is d in the expression below a is acceleration f is force m is mass t is time v is velocity which expression represents energy so you, you check the units force times time remember the units should be joules or newton meters or it could be kilogram meters squared per second squared so force times time that is momentum so that is out let's check force times velocity times time remember velocity times time could be um, speed times time that is distance i think so this one is energy so the answer is going to be we can check the units F is in newtons, V is meters per second times time, which is seconds. So this one cancels that you remain with the newton meters, which is energy. So the answer is B. Which row of the table, which row of the table shows the physical quantity and its correct unit? Although electric fields was removed, the answer is going to be, I think, A. Because electric field strength is defined as the force per unit charge force acting on a unit positive charge and the force remember is kilogram that is mass times acceleration so kilogram meters per second squared divided by charge which is columns so it is kilogram meters per second squared per column that is correct specificity capacity heat is a uh, specificity capacity First of all, this is not a unit of energy because of the per kilogram. Although per Kelvin is fine, the other part of energy is joules per Kelvin. This part is not representing joules, so that is out. Tensile strain, strain has no units, so that is also out. Young modulus has the same units as stress or as pressure, so this one is out. Force over area does not give us power negative 3 for S. The equation relating pressure and density is P is equal to rho GH. How can both sides of the equation be written in terms of base units? So pressure is force over area. So it is force over area, which is kilogram meters per second squared divided by meters squared, which is kilogram per meter per second squared. So it means we can leave out A and B. It is kilogram per meter per second squared. It means even D is out because it is not per second squared. So the answer is automatically C. What is a reasonable estimate of the diameter of an alpha particle? An alpha particle has um, two protons and two neutrons. Of course, it means it also has two electrons. Now, the mass of an atom is approximately 10 power negative 10. The mass, I mean not the mass, the, the diameter of an atom is approximately going to be 10 power negative 10. What is the reasonable estimate of the diameter of an atom? So the size of an atom is approximately 10 power 
negative 10. So here we have options. What is a reasonable estimate of the diameter of an, an alpha particle? An alpha particle is a helium nucleus. This one is for the nu uh, this is for an alpha particle is a helium nucleus. Okay, so the, this is for the atom. Since an alpha particle is a helium nucleus, not an atom, so then the answer is going to be A because for the nucleus, the diameter is between 10 power negative 14 to 10 power negative 15 for the nucleus. An alpha particle is a helium nucleus. So this question is quite technical. If they wanted uh, uh, an atom, then the most closest would be 10 power negative 9 or 10 power negative uh, 12. But since they said an alpha particle, which we know as a helium nucleus, then the answer is going to be 10 power negative 15, as opposed to these ones here. So the answer is 10 power negative 15. The diagram shows two vectors, x and y. In which vector triangle does the vector z show the magnitude and direction of x minus y? So like I said, we can also look for if, if z is equal to x minus y, then z plus y should give us x. And remember, when two vectors are joined head to tail and they form a, a loop in one direction, the resultant is the other way around. So if we say z plus y, z plus y, this one cannot give us z plus y z plus y these ones are in the other way around we can't have z plus y there okay this one gives us z plus y but then x is in the same direction so this is out but then z plus y they are forming that loop then there is x must be the other way around opposite direction so the answer is going to be b alternatively you could just fix x and reverse y by measuring the length representing y i just reverse y here so this is going to be negative y. So x plus negative y should give us z. So z should be the other way around. The diagram shows the graduations of a correctly calibrated ammeter. When the current is zero, the pointer is at zero. The ammeter is accidentally readjusted so that when the current is zero, the point is at x. Which calibration graph best represents the response of the readjusted ammeter? So when there is, if it is accidentally readjusted and reads x when there is when the current is zero, so it means remember current is on the x-axis. So when there is no current, there should not there should be it should be having a deflection. So it means this one is out. It means there is when there is a current, when there is no deflection. This one also means there is a current when there is no deflection. So these ones are out. Yet there should be no current, but when there is a deflection. So we remain with A and B. So there must be a deflection when there is no current. That's why I've eliminated C and D. C and D are showing there is no deflection, but there is a current. Yet there must be a deflection when there is no current. Now we remain with these two. When we look at the calibration, we notice that the gradations, the, uh, the gradations or the separation between the divisions becomes narrower. What does that mean? As the current increases, the deflection must, the, uh, the change in the deflection must decrease. As the, current de as the current increases, the change in the angle of deflection must decrease. So the answer is automatically going to be A because B shows that as the current increases, the change in the angle of deflection also is becoming, it is increasing, the gradient is increasing here. Here it is showing a decrease in the change in the angle of deflection. So the answer is, the answer is A because the separation of the divisions becomes smaller as the current increases. A laser emits light of wavelength 600 nanometers. What is the distance expressed as the number of wavelengths traveled by the light in one second? Distance. 
So time is one second. We know that speed, speed of uh, light from a laser, it is three times 10 power eight. The time is one second. We know that frequency is equal to speed divided by, uh, divide by wavelength or frequency speed over wavelength. So the question is, what is the distance expressed as a number of wavelength? Of course, that is the number of, of oscillations per unit time. So uh, this is going to be 3 times 10 power 8 divided by a uh, one wavelength is 600 times 10 power negative 9. So we have 3 exponent 8 divided by 600 exponent negative 9. So we have 5 times 10 power 14. So the number of wavelengths is 5 power times 10 power 4. That is the same as frequency. Number of computer wavelengths per in second, per in time, that is uh, the frequency. At temperature close to 0 Kelvin, at temperature close to 0 Kelvin, the specific capacity C of a particular solid is given by C is equal to Bt cubed, where T is thermodynamic temperature, so it is in Kelvin. And B is a constant characteristic of the solid. What are the units of constant B expressed in SI base units? So um, B is going to be equal to C divided by T cubed. At temperature close to zero Kelvin, the specific heat capacity C of a solid is given by that equation there. Of course, specific capacity is a, a quantity of it's, it's a quantity of a level content, but then uh, B should have. Okay, let's uh, express specific capacity. Specific capacity is the energy required to um, raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one Kelvin. So it is energy per kilogram. Energy is in joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one Kelvin. So it is joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So this is going to be joules. Joules is energy, which is kilogram meters squared per second squared times per kilogram, then times per Kelvin. Then divide by T power 3, which is Kelvin power 3. So per kilogram cancels. So this where we have kilograms is out. Then we remain with m squared, s power negative 2, and k power negative 4. So the answer is b. We subtract the powers. So it is k power negative 4. The table shows the x component and y component of four, four, four forces four force vectors. Which force vector has the largest magnitude? Which force vector has the largest magnitude? Okay, so um, so here we have uh, x component is 2, y component is 9. So the resultant is going to be 2 squared plus 9 squared under the square root. So 2 squared is 4 plus 8, 1 under the square root. So that is equal to 9.2 newtons. Then we have 3 squared, 3 squared plus 8 squared under the square root. So here it is 8.5. Then we have 4 squared plus 7 squared, that is 65, so this is smaller, 65 under the square root. Then we have 5 squared plus 6 squared, the root of 61, so this is smaller. So the answer is going to be A, because it gives us root of, of, 80, 80, root of 85, which is bigger. 
This gives us 9.2, so the answer is A. A calibration graph is produced for a fault ammeter. Which ammeter reading will be nearest to the corrective value? So we can just check these values, these ammeter readings with the true values. When the ammeter reading is this one, here it gives a value which is not uh, equal, which is not 1. When the ammeter reading is this one, it gives a value slightly above 1, yet here it is 2, 1, I mean 0. 0. This is 1 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1 over 5, that is 0. 0.2. So this is 0. 0.2, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.8. So when it is 0. 0.4, this is 0. 0.2, 0. 0.4, 0. Um, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, this is 0 0.8. So when it is 0 0.4, here it is not 0 0.4. When it is 0 0.6, here it is just above 0 0.4. When it is 0 0.8, here it is also 0 0.8, so the answer is going to be D. When it is 0 0.8, when the ammeter reading is 0 0.8, the true value is also 0 0.8, so the answer is D. The, the drag of force F on a moving sphere obeys the equation f is equal to k a v squared where a is the, the spheric the sphere's frontal area so a is in meters squared v is speed so it is meters per second what are the s what are the base units of the constant k so k is going to be equal to f over a times v squared so the units f is kilogram meters per second squared Area is meters squared. V is going to be meters squared per second squared because it is V squared. So it is meters per second, but this is squared. Okay, so S power negative 2 cancels. S has cancelled, so I don't expect S in the answer. That leaves me the answer with the answer as C automatically. So this is kilogram m power 1 minus 4. We subtract the powers to become kilogram m power negative 3. So the answer is C. The table contains some quantities together with their symbols and units. Which expression has the units of energy? Which expression has the units of energy? Let's check the first one. Remember, energy can be work done, which is force times distance, which can be newton meters. So let's check newton meters. So uh, G is newtons per kilogram. So I have newtons per kilogram times rho is density, which is kilograms per meters cubed, times h, which is meters, times v, which is meters cubed. So let's simplify that. So we remain with the kilograms per kilogram as cancelled out. Meters per meter cubed and meters cubed cancels, you remain with the newton meters. So the answer is going to be A. That is the experience of energy. Because I said energy can be work done, and work done is force times distance in the direction of the force, which is newtons times meters. And lastly, the graph shows two current voltage calibration curves for a solar cell exposed to different light intensities. A solar cell expressed, uh, I mean, exposed to different light intensities. At a zero voltage, at zero voltage, what is the ratio current at a thousand watts per meter squared? At zero voltage, a thousand watts. Okay, a thousand watts. A thousand watts, I think it is this one here. The scale on the vertical is one divided by five, which is 0 0.2. So this is 2.8. That is 2.8 amperes. So that is 2.8 amperes. Then over current at 100 watts per meter squared. So this is the current, 0 0.2.4.6. So this is 0 0.6 amperes. So this is divided by 0 0.6 amperes. So 2.8 divided by 0 0.6, which gives us 4.6 recurring, which is 4.7. 
so the answer is going to be B. I think that marks the end of that marks the end of physical quantities, units, and measurement techniques. Next will be uh, kinematics and dynam dynamics. Kinematics and dynamics. See you. Bye bye.